Hi, Facebook friends and my fellow genius mystic healers. Um, what a blessed day this has been this Sunday. Uh, I, I hopped on, as you guys know, the meditation started this morning at 9 a.m. And I tried to get onto the 9 a.m. meditation, but was not successful at doing that. But I was able to log in at 10 a.m. And so I've been doing it continuously since 10 a.m. And my intention, um, you know, to show up at these meditations is to spread heart and brain coherence and a whole complete unconditional love so that it would create a sense of well-being and a wholeness and coherence for all living beings so that the presence of the coronavirus would have zero effect and impact on anything and all things. And um, much to my surprise, this last meditation that we just finished a few minutes ago, um, something, uh, something happened to me. I, um, there's a part of the meditation where Dr. Joe talks about going into different dimensions. So when I, he talked about opening a door but I've never seen a door this way. This door, when I reached out to open the door, the door was almost like, almost like, uh, you know how like if you open a book and all the pages fan open, it was kind of like that where I opened the door, but I know this doesn't make sense, but it's almost like I was opening an infinite number of doors. As I opened it, it was just like all these doors, white doors showed up. And then I became acutely aware that I was in the sixth dimension. And immediately to my left, I saw these light beings. They were kind of a mother of pearlish white. Um, and you, you could not see their faces, but their faces were kind of like these oval shaped and kind of like at an angle. And they were all, when I first perceived them, they were all here on my left side. And so they had these oblong almost egg kind of egg-shaped faces but you you couldn't see the faces per se and then they had these beautiful white bodies and these long hands with long fingers and they were there greeting me and um and then they had these the, the almost like this white robish kind of like of a body and then kind of i kind of sensed more than saw that they had kind of long pointy feet and um, they told me that they were light beings and that I was a light being too. And then they told me to look at my left hand. So I looked at my left hand and as they showed me their, their hand and I saw their long, light-filled, long fingers, I saw my hand and my hand turned into a hand that looked just like theirs. And I was like amazed. I was like, wow. And then all of a sudden I, I noticed that there was not just hundreds or thousands of them, but I said, I, I noticed that it looked like there must be millions of them because there were more than the eye could see. They kind of like disappeared into infinity. And, and then telepathically they told me, yes, look around. And so as I looked to the right, I saw how there was just like this infinite sea of all of them all the way around me. And I said, I was just kind of wowing it, to be honest with you. And I didn't have a lot to say. So I was more like I was in the state of just listening and receiving and experiencing. And so then one of them kind of singled himself out and said, it's time for you to go into the next dimension. And they said, the door's over there. So I looked kind of like at a 40 feet, 45, no, it was probably more like a 90 degree angle from where I was at talking to them. And I went all the way through to that door. I opened that door. And then the thing was that while I was in that sixth dimension, there was this amazing amount of 
love and bliss and almost like this euphoric joy and happiness. And so I'm like, I can't imagine. It's just unfathomable to have any, any state that's greater than that. So now they're telling me to go into this next dimension. So I, it's not like I was walking like with my natural feet. It was more like I was sliding. It's kind of hard to describe, but it was kind of like a sliding through a light tunnel. <laughs> and then I got to the door and then I went to open that door. And there I was greeted into the seventh dimension. And I was just like, whoa. Um, to be honest with you, everything was so crystal clear while I was going through it, through it. But right now, I don't really remember much of what was said to me in that seventh dimension. Um, I just remember the feeling of going, oh my gosh, how is it possible that you could feel more joy, more bliss, more love, more of this just balmy, euphoric joy. And, um, and then I remember something about my autonomic nervous system. Um, but that's really all I remember right now. I don't know if I'm going to remember later. I just remember being in the seventh dimension and it was very clear that I was in the seventh dimension. It was distinct. It was still light and airy, um, but it definitely was different than the sixth dimension. And then I was told, I don't remember what, what the beings looked like in that dimension, to be honest. I have no notion right now as I'm retelling this to you, even though I just finished this. Um, next thing I'm told is to open the door to the next dimension. So I'm like, wow, this is the seventh dimension. I, again, I'm at a loss as to, I don't have an imagination great enough that could imagine anything more than this. So I'm like, okay, so next thing I know, I, I, the second I say, okay, I'm sliding down this like light tunnel again. And then my hand is on the door. And now I have like this even greater eager anticipation to open this next door. And this is the door into the, <clears throat> into the eighth dimension. So I open that door. And when I open that door, um, it's kind of hard to, to describe, but I had these, these like little beings. I want to call them minions, but I think that's disrespectful. So all I can say is that they were, they were, this is kind of funny because I'm very petite. I'm only five foot one. So these are even smaller than me. And they were, I don't know, there's quite a few of them all around me and they were childlike. They were childlike, but they were kind of wider and denser. Like a child would be more diminutive, more, you know, smaller and petite boned. These were denser, they were denser, thicker little beings. And the next thing I know is they, they were doing something to me. I don't remember them asking me, but I do remember saying, I surrender. I surrender, I let go. I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing for anything. I'm willing for the unknown. I'm willing to be a vessel. I'm willing to receive whatever knowledge. I'm willing to, um, to be used to serve. I'm willing and I just let go and I, and I surrender. And the next thing I know, I was like, it was very much um, like they were doing something. I don't really know what they were doing, but they were, all I know is that my body started shaking uncontrollably, but it's like all of them that were all the way around me, they were like shaking me and they must have been adjusting me. I really don't know what they were doing, but I know that what I felt was this uncontrollable shaking. And for some reason it was pulling more, me more towards the left and I could not stop the shaking. And I remember thinking, don't be afraid, just let go. Because I remember Dr. Jill always telling us to don't be afraid, just let go so that you can go on 
to find out what's beyond that and you don't stop the process. So I just kept on shaking, shaking and shaking and it was kind of a long time. I have, I have no notion of time. I don't know how long this went on, but it, it, it was, you know, the meditation was a little over an hour long, so I guess it must have been in that hour time span. I kept on shaking and shaking and shaking and I'm like, whoa. And then there are voices all of a sudden from a low kind of a harmonic sound um, and it was like a like a deep whole harmonic sound of like millions of voices even though there weren't that many of them um, and I don't want to try and number how many there were there was a group of them all the way and they were all the way around me I don't remember seeing them grabbing me, you know, with their arms or anything, but they were definitely pulling me from all directions, but I was being pulled literally this way. And it was like this uncontrollable shake. It wasn't painful, it wasn't unpleasant, it was just very, I was very much shaking, and I I had no control over it, none. And so I'm like, okay, I don't know if they're shaking something out of me or they're readjusting all sorts of things in me. And for a second I thought to myself, <laughs> this meditation is not to be, it's not supposed to, my intention was not supposed to be to benefit me. My intention was to put me, myself in a heart and brain coherent state so that I could, you know, spread the higher vibrational love and increase the vibration of the planet through, you know, entrainment and, and everything that we have learned through our teachings. And so it's really to help because we are in this you know, we've got the coronavirus, which I do believe the coronavirus ex exists, but I really think that the worst virus we have is the virus of fear that has grown out of pandemic proportion, and that's at the root of all illness, all maladies, all anything that's wrong with us. And so the whole idea, my intention was to, you know, love overcomes all things, so it was to raise my vibration and to be that vessel that could be used for that purpose. So now I'm, you know, shaking uncontrollably. And at one point, my eyes, without my intending to, my eyes opened. I saw, you know, like my computer in my office. And then they just as quickly closed. And I kept on shaking. And then all of a sudden, this vibrational, harmonic voices and whatever this process was, stopped. And then I kept on hearing Dr. Joe, you know, in the meditation, you know, continuing with the guided meditation. And then I just, like without skipping a beat, I just kept on, you know, with the breathing process and focusing on my heart and focusing on my pineal gland and just, you know, being no one, no place, nowhere, no thing in no time. And then the next thing I know, boom, all these little beans are around me again and again I'm shaking uncontrollably and and I don't know if it was longer or not but I just felt like I kept on shaking and shaking and shaking and when I first started shaking I wasn't aware even though my body was moving it's almost as if my body could feel that I was shaking but it didn't register with my brain I know that doesn't make any sense but that's the notion that I have because it seemed like my brain somehow it went into like limbo somewhere I don't really know where but it was obviously in a different dimension and then my brain seemed to catch up with my body and then I'm like oh my body's moving and shaking uncontrollably again and it's like shaking and shaking and shaking and then finally it stopped and then that whole thing kind of faded away and I returned to the dimension of just all space and blackness and then continued on with wherever Dr. Jill was in the meditation. So I thought, okay, something is happening. I'm like, perhaps I had a biological upgrade. I don't know. Um, but I just thought this was it was definitely unexpected. Um, it was a very cool, a very cool feeling. But I've really been holding the vision of, of really 
as I lend myself to do more and more of these meditations. I know that that um, just as we've seen the the video of the I think it's 64 metronomes that in less than four minutes, you know, even though they start them all at different times at different rates, um, and they're all out of whack at the first, at the beginning of the video, that in less than four minutes, all 64 of them are perfectly entrained. And so my intention is to be part of the collective, you know, with my fellow genius mystic healers with Dr. Joe's group and any of the healing energies that are available anywhere in any dimension in any galaxy so that we are the metronomes that help and train those who are out of whack and they entrain to us that's the vision that i've been holding for for several weeks now and i think and i really feel that it's working i feel that there's a shift that's taking place so now as i sit here i have this kind of unusual I don't know. I really don't know how to describe it. Uh, a very unusual feeling. Um, but it's a very peaceful, a very, very peaceful, kind of like an unknown mystical, like je ne sais quoi feeling. So all I want to say to you guys is I want to encourage you to continue on with the meditations, um, whether you feel something or not. I wish I could say that every time I do a meditation, I have like a wow experience. That's not true. Um, I will confess that I did try to command my brain to have a piezoelectric effect in this meditation because I haven't had that piezoelectric effect for a while. Um, actually, in 2020, I haven't had any. In 2019, I had a lot of them, and some of them were really loud. Um, some of them I would have on the left and my right side. Um, but I haven't had any in 2020. And so I thought, you know, I can command my brain to do all sorts of other things. Why not command my pineal gland to create the piezoelectric effect, command my pineal gland to create benzodiazepine, dimethyltryptophan. And I did command my brain to, to do those things as well as the piezoelectric effect. I didn't feel the piezoelectric effect. If I had it, I did not feel that snap that I normally feel. That jolt did not happen in this meditation, but I had these other things that happened. So, and I know that once you give your brain a command, you will let it go because you know that it's done. So then you just have to be open to, it's going to show up whenever it's going to show up. In this meditation, another meditation, it doesn't matter. So um, I just want to encourage you guys to keep on doing the work. Uh, I've done meditations as short as three minutes long. And in three minutes, I was able to manifest getting my car that was locked in a parking lot in Vietri sul Mare, Italy, at 9 o'clock, 9.13 at night to be exact. And it was a padlock that I've never seen before. And less than 15 minutes later, I was able to manifest getting somebody, two strange guys basically showed up in a black car, opened the gate, made, never made any kind contact, eye contact or anything with me. And I was able to get my car out and all I did was a three-minute meditation this stuff works you guys creating in quantum and just slowing your heart rate slowing your brain waves being no one no thing nowhere no place in no time and just putting that intention that elevated emotion and knowing that it, your order is in and then saying well I have no idea how long this is gonna take doesn't matter if I need to spend the night outside you do it it's kind of like this. It's like, I don't know how long it's going to take for this meditation or these series of meditations to heal this whole pandemic and to neutralize it, but I know it's done. So we just keep on doing it because it feels good, it's fun, and it's what we're called to do. So I wish, gosh, I so wish I could have you guys hear, feel, and experience the sound of those little beings, the, the harmonic vibrational sound that they were making. It was kind of like a beautiful, like train accordion, harmonica, um, resonant sound. And it was like all enveloping all around me, but it was them, it was, that's how they communicate. And it was kind of a musical harmonic 
frequency. And um, gosh, if I could reproduce that again, that would be cool. I don't know if I'll ever experience that again. And I know that the more I try and reproduce that, you can't be attached. So that's part of what we learn in the work. But I am so, I'm so glad and I'm so grateful that I was able to experience that experience with those little beings. Um, and maybe I'll ask the divine to tell me what they're, what do you name those beings? And what were those demean, those beings in the sixth dimension who were so beautiful and they were white and like mother of pearlish and graceful and flowy and um, so trippy to see my hand. I'm very olive complected. So for my hand to go from this to their long, like mother of pearl, whitish, long fingered hands, that was like, whoa. Oh, and that was, I do remember them saying to me, um, as they were talking to me, they told me, um, they told me that I was talking to me because I was them and they were me. And I thought, interesting, because one of the things that I got when I was in Cancun at the monastery in June, it came to me when we were doing the walking meditation out on the beach at the Grand Velas Hotel. The words that came to me was, I'm one with the one, I am the one. And the moment I heard that, that became my mantra for the rest of not only the seven day advance, but it's been a mantra that I've been repeating pretty much every day since. I'm one with the one, I am the one. I'm one with the one, I am the one. So when these, I'm gonna call them light beings because they were all like that pearlescent, mother of pearlyish, rainbowish white, ethereal color and they were like semi-dense they weren't they weren't like ghosts but they weren't like solid people either they were kind of like in-betweens um but they their message was it's like that i was them and they were me and right after they said that that's when they told me look at your hand and i instinctively knew that they meant my left hand so i looked at my left hand and then so to see my hand literally morph from one to the other, back and forth, back and forth, that was, that was astonishing. It was cool. It was exciting. I knew it meant multiple things at the same time and that it would be revealed to me in time. So I still don't know what the effects of that shaking of these meditation is going to be, but what, it doesn't matter, but what does matter is that I know that I know that I know that there is a positive outcome and benefit, not just for myself, but for every one of you that are tuning in, tapping in and turning on to this Facebook Live video, for every one of you who is part of the, the collective of genius, mystic healers that are part of Dr. Joe's work, those of us who have been blessed enough to have attended his seven day advanced workshops, those who are aspiring to, um, those who have done any of his work at any capacity and any level, read any of his books, are practitioners of, of the meditations, and even those who maybe not e are not even aware of Dr. Joe's workings and teachings, but um, those who are all anywhere in the universe who are part of that unconditional love and the desire and intent to heal, not just around our local geographical spaces and places and time, but our globe and our universe. It's, it's that greater collective. We all benefit from this. Um, my voice is sounding a little different during this. Maybe that's the change is my voice changed. But yeah, my voice is sounding a little different as I'm speaking right that right now. I'm noticing that uh, with you guys. So that's it. Um, I don't think I have anything else to share. I just wanted to share this experience with you guys because it was just minutes before that I finished this meditation and um, I wanted to be in that same energy as I shared it with you. So I would love to hear what you guys think. If you have an insight or a notion, um, if you've had something similar happen to you, I would love to see that in the comments because I know that I read a lot of the comments every time I see it, like Morgan. Morgan does her videos. I love the joy and the freshness of her expression and her being every time she does a Facebook Live. 
so many of you um, do those and I always make it a point to read the comments because I often find a resonance or a gold nugget that it's like oh that message is for me it's like oh they're speaking to me here and it's like oh my soulmate is speaking to me here so um, I want to be a conduit for you guys as well um, so I'm not for myself I'm not by myself I'm with you all and so thank you okay I'm gonna chill now and just be for a while this has been extraordinary so thank you all Jan Camilla, Kristen Williams, Lynn Olivari from my Mystic WhatsApp group. Hi, Lynn. This has been amazing today. Let me see what other people are on here. Vicky, thank you for joining. Kristen Williams, Kasia, Savika. Thank you guys for the thumbs up for the hearts. Have um, a beautiful rest of your Sunday. And remember to smile on the days that end in why. Why? Because we are love. Bye-bye. Ciao for now.